Hi friends, hi family, welcome back to the channel. This is the second video. I'm surprised we made it this far. Like mentioned in our intro video, um, we have a bunch of footage from that first trip that we took after the hurricane, and we had really no idea what we were gonna do with our footage when we were on our trip. It was more of just taking it for our own enjoyment. So we didn't do the best of job recording everywhere, some places better than others, when we were more motivated to record. And explaining what we were doing probably weren't that great at it either. So we just wanted to make a longer video than our original video, kind of recapping that trip we went on. We'll provide a little bit of narrative on what we were doing, where we were at, and just our experiences on the trip. Thanks for tuning and hope you guys enjoy. Peace. We officially started our new beginning in life on the road October 28th, exactly one month after the hurricane. We arrived to our first stop, a Boondockers Welcome location. Really quickly, for those like us that had never heard of Boondockers Welcome or Harvest Host, in short, it's really just a service that connects RV travelers with landowners where they offer their land for you to stay overnight, either for a small fee or if it's a small business, they just ask that you support their local business. Could be ranging anywhere from five to fifteen dollars a night if you're paying cash or you might just buy a bottle of wine to stay the night we found it very useful for many of our one night stays while traveling across the country we stayed just north of sanderson florida right on the florida georgia line in the osceola national forest it was beautiful and just what we needed somewhat in the middle of nowhere the ugg boots and sweater you'd swear it's like uh 30 degrees out but no it's like 70. i don't know how to do cold ready no phone service, treated to nightly starlit skies and the nearest Walmart being 30 minutes away. We camped here for a few days. It was $15 a night for full hookups, a treat for us as we were learning the ins and outs. The hosts were amazing, helpful with setup and even offered us to stay long-term after learning our circumstances. Our plan was to head north then cut west, so we decided to head out when we originally planned. We have a lot of ground to cover. Just like the girls, we are getting used to things as we go, but it has been fun unpacking our new home and getting used to the RV life. Well, we are about to head out of our first stop. Trevor just emptied the sewage because they're so awesome and they have a septic tank here that they let us use. The girls are doing very well. This is going to be a long way, so hoping that they continue to be this good. Right, Callie? She says, yes, mama, yes. But we made it into our first gas station, made it through, it was busy. Callie, any thoughts? Awesome. She finally got better in the car ride, thankfully. But yeah, I we lucked out. I got a little panicky pulling in, but we found someone leaving and was able to pull straight in and only a little crooked, but It'll work. Now, another two to three hours to the next stop. And then we make it to Myrtle this evening. Yay, Callie. Jump forward and I thought it was a cat. It was Judy. South Carolina. 
Our second stop was one of my old stomping grounds, North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Junebug knew exactly where we were right when we pulled in. We were able to see friends, family, and even had some water therapy. We parked the rig right where my pops and I used to work and live. Thank you, Captain Larry. We were lucky to have a water hookup. We were close to laundry, a dumpster, and treated to very clean Porta Johns. We indulged in Boardwalk Billy's happy hour, caught up with old neighbors, and enjoyed a legendary night out with old friends listening to the best music. After leaving Myrtle, we officially were headed out west. We were making our way now to one of Trevor's old stomping grounds, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Along the way, we found spots just for overnight accommodations, our first stop being Cracker Barrel. We called in advance to ask permission, and the staff was friendly and said it was no problem. The dedicated RV spots weren't as level as we wanted, but found a nice flat spot tucked in the back. The next morning, we treated ourselves to a nice breakfast and then continued on west to our first Harvest Host location. What are you doing back there? Oh. You want my help? You want my help? You want me to help you get out? <coughs> what are you doing? <coughs> You're so vicious. You want my help? You want mommy's help? Come here. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> night we stayed here at the Cracker Barrel. The Crackle Barrel. Uh, I'd say it was 10 out of 10. On our best yeah, right on the other side of us is pretty busy road. I-20 I-20 I think. Yeah. Yep. The girls are in the car ready for the next leg. Uh -huh. They're ready for it. Well, you know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, we had a wonderful breakfast at Cracker Barrel. Got some Christmas presents after at the old store. Everyone was super nice. Uh, yeah. Would recommend staying at Cracker Bale. Probably do it again, hopefully. We'll see. Thank you, Cracker Bale. Welcome to Sweet Home Alabama. Welcome to Alabama, girls. Our first reservation with Harvest Hosts was on Gnarled Oak Farm in Hernando, Mississippi, just south of Memphis, Tennessee. It was a nice change from the night prior, staying by a highway. Quiet night and complimentary rooster yeah. alarm clocks. All right, so we are here in, what's the name of the Cochran? Cochran. Cochran? Cochran, Mississippi. Um, we're at a farm with pigs and sheep and turkeys and cows and everything else. And look, the girls are loving it. They've been here since we've pulled in. Are you guys intrigued? Very intrigued. <laughs> and that's probably where they'll be all night. 
<laughs> the host welcomed us and introduced us to their dog, Hank, who we fell in love with, along with all the other chickens, pigs, cows, goats, and other animals who shared their home with us for the night. We purchased fresh sausage, beef, and even chapstick homemade with tallow. We woke up to a cozy, rainy morning and decided to head out before we got stuck in the mud. Once we reached Arkansas, we set up camp at Crystal Springs Campground, beautifully placed in the Washita National Forest. So we are in Crystal Springs, Arkansas. It's a beautiful morning. Actually, it's cold, but we're, uh, we're prepared for it. This bacon's gonna be so good. Yes, here's Trevor grilling. We're having an extravagant breakfast today. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you make bacon on the grill, but... Yeah, we actually have no idea. Wow, what a pretty morning. It's the first campground we've actually stayed in. We took a trip into Little Rock to get some provisions, met up with family friends, visited some of Trevor's old spots, and finally got to take a warm shower and catch up on dishes. Dry camping caught up with us and we were still learning the ins and outs. We made a fire, cooked dinner on the grill, and quite enjoyed our nights here. Coming from Southwest Florida, it has been nice experiencing the seasons changing. Our next stop was Broken Arrow, Oklahoma to spend more time with family. Seeing familiar faces was always a treat. We snuck into an empty cul-de-sac to park the rig while we stayed here. We loved every minute of time with family, but the road continued to call our name. All right, this is a quick stop in Jared's, Jared and Stephanie and Miss Avery's neighborhood. Uh, it is cold, very cold. Uh, below freezing. We stayed in that cul-de-sac right there. But now we're hitting the road, heading west. I think we're trying to end up in somewhere in North Texas today. There is a massive cold front today. So we're, we may be a little delayed due to snow slash ice. So we will see what the day brings us. There's town. And yeah, headed for the Grand Canyon next. <laughs> Leaving Oklahoma, we encountered our first snowstorm, but after taking our time and even stopping at Bug Ranch, we made it to our scheduled harvest host in Canyon, Texas, about 30 minutes south of Amarillo. We enjoyed a nice Cabernet at Bar Z Winery and slept through a very chilly night. The next morning, we continued our way west after a quick stop at Cadillac Ranch. On this leg, we were on Route 66 and took every exit we could to experience the old Route 66. We enjoyed seeing the retro towns and car displays. 
At Cadillac Ranch, we met Joao and decided to share a ride together towards New Mexico as we were both headed for that direction. After a long travel day, we pulled into Grants, New Mexico, about 30 minutes west of Albuquerque. We stayed at Junkyard Brewery on Old Route 66. Joao decided to stick around, so we enjoyed dinner together and became fast friends. The next morning, we dropped Joao off at a nearby Mickey D's, said our goodbyes, and carried on our way. So, this is when it gets good. After leaving Grants, we crossed into Arizona and traveled through the beautiful Navajo Reservation. We were amazed by this region's landscape. Our home for the next few days was a quaint RV park in Kanab, Utah, smack dab in the middle of Bryce, Zion, and the Grand Canyon. We did not even comprehend what we were going to experience on this leg. first morning in Utah, Chile, Chile, Today's our first first hike. We're going to Bright. And uh, we're just gonna figure it out. infinitely vast land, the color-changing mountains, the sense of simplicity and peace. It was beautifully unexpected. We did little to no research considering the trip was entirely unplanned, and we started to see how ignorance truly can be bliss. we could say about this part of our trip but one thing we can say is this if you've never been to this part of the country put it on your list season we were treated to virtually empty parks it seemed perfect however around this time we did experience some lows we were reminded how beautiful mother nature can be so shortly after we saw how ugly she can be we just considered ourselves lucky to have each other and be surrounded by breathtaking views to uplift us and remind us that life goes on this too shall pass so we're leaving j and j campground yeah 10 out of 10 Little dog park and the uh, trash dump. Junie loved it here. We took her to the Grand Canyon. Forgot the camera. Oops. But yes, we had power, water, sewage. All the amenities. All the amenities. We did have water freeze overnight, every night, but. I want to make Yeah. I'm really trying to figure out a way to keep the. You know what? I don't even know where I'm going. Sorry! As we booked it to the west coast, we made a couple quick pit stops, both in the middle of nowhere. We stayed at a closed ranch in Barstow, California, and a closed vineyard just outside of Fresno, California. Then we arrived to the infamous Yosemite. (music) 
We ended up staying at Indian Flat Campground right outside of the park for an entire week. We explored waterfalls, hikes, viewpoints. It was nice to call this unbelievable place home for a bit, considering it was our longest stay so far. We branched out to see Kings Canyon National Park and enjoyed Thanksgiving with our little family while the season changed and frost began to set. After a surreal week, we made our way south and stopped in Rosamond at what came to be one of our favorite boondockers welcome spots. The host was so welcoming and had quite an impressive Christmas light show. Who doesn't love to get in the Christmas spirit? After a not so great long California traffic travel day, we made it to SoCal and parked the rig at an equestrian park in Campo, California. We had our first major mishap here, forgetting the height of our rig and destroying the AC on a low hanging branch. Oops. Finally, we got to do what we came here to do and caught up with my old college friends in Ocean Beach, right outside of San Diego. Here we learned one of them was about to road trip east, so what are the odds? We got to caravan with figs for a couple legs back towards home. Between the frustration with the AC and good times with friends, we failed to document much this stop. Our first stop was a little shag bar in Wilcox, Arizona for dinner and a good night's sleep. By dawn, we were up and got our homes back on the road. We then set up camp for a couple nights on BLM land in Alamogordo, New Mexico, right by White Sands National Park. We enjoyed exploring the sandy vast playground and hanging out with an old friend. We said our goodbyes with figs. He continued east while we were headed south for Big Bend National Park in Texas. We took a quick overnight rest stop at a Walmart in Fort Stockton and made it to our campground in the park by early afternoon. Our time here was short because we wanted to be home by Christmas. However, we did what we could to make the most out of it by taking early hikes and even popping over to Mexico for lunch. From Big Bend, we headed east to see more family. On the way, we stopped at a little retro vineyard in the center of Texas. Junie made another friend, and we called it an early night. Travel can be tiring, but totally worth it. Once we hit Dallas, we stayed at a wonderful state park campground. On this travel day, we experienced another mishap. However, this time, it was not our fault. The entire fridge fell off the wall, and we did our best to figure out a plan on how to get it back without any more damage. Nonetheless, we had a great visit with Dylan, Chelsea, and Miss Eva, and I was treated to my first Bucky's experience. 10 out of 10. We also had a night out that somehow got us together with old friends and neighbors from all around. After a great visit with friends and family, we headed for home. We stayed overnight at a sweet brewery near Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and then drove through four states in one day, finally making it back to Florida. We made a stop at a southern barbecue joint, Grover Tees, in the Panhandle, and treated ourselves to a nice date here. Finally, we completed our last leg of the loop, making it back to our very first Boondockers welcome spot in Sanderson, Florida. Well, we have officially done the loop. We are back in Sanderson, making some brats. It's like deja vu. It is deja vu. We've been here before. The girls are happy to be here. Salad. Oh, air fryer. Yum. We are going to feast. And uh, leftovers from last night. Forget about it. Forget about it. And then successfully making it home for the holidays. 51 days. 8,827 miles. 13 states. Seven national parks. And two countries. 
If you made it through this whole video, thank you so much. We are so grateful and appreciative of all the support that we've had since the storm, all the help we had immediately after, and support we had throughout the entire trip. We look forward to sharing the rest of our adventures with you and hope you can join. Thanks.